Right, troops, welcome back to the Dawn's channel. I am the Dawn Father, uh, and I'm now going to do a quick review of round two of the 2021 season in the AFL. And by God, what a round it was indeed. Starting up on Thursday, 25th of March, Carlton versus Collingwood. These two clubs, uh, great rivals of the sport, of course, from the VFL into the AFL days, have met each other so many occasions. And what was funny was when I looked at the stats, both teams had won an equal amount each. I think there was only about four draws, but it was something ridiculous, like a hundred and something odd um, wins, but it was identical. So this one had the chance for one team to take a little bit of a lead on that start front. It was at the MCG, and let me tell you, the place was absolutely rocking. I predicted a Carlton win, purely because I feel Collingwood aren't the team of what they should be, things going wrong off the field, all these reasons were, all these reasons etc are why I predicted a Carlton win. Plus I think Carlton do possess an awful lot of quality, they've recruited pretty well uh, and they've had some young guns over the last couple of years that are starting to show great um, promise. So as I say, predicted Carlton and I was wrong. It was a very, very good game indeed. Probably well, probably the second best game of the weekend for me in terms of competitiveness and um, just played in the right fashion and manner. Just two teams really going for it, for it and um, as I say, played in the, the most competitive spirit. Brilliant to see. It did finish 85-106 to Collingwood um, and there was just a few things I wanted to point out. Gibbons in this game two wonderful goals the slider from the right hand pocket uh, possibly out of bounds i would say it was out of bounds when he kicked it but see to be fair i'd give him it just pure because of the pure cheek absolute audacity to try it to begin with but not only that to execute the kick with great precision and technique what a goal it was by the way Gibbons two fantastic goals from him as well in the game uh, but look Collingwood won just want to throw out a few names Adam's been sensational uh, again really enjoy watching him Majacek brilliant gets up kicks so well the goal is good uh, they cost a little fair lovely little goal I love his um, I love how he just sort of picks up the scraps in and around the rocks and uh, breaks away and gets a shot off. He's a, he's a, he is a little ferret to say the least, but Colin would win anyway. Starting my predictions off badly with, oh, blown it away. I said Carlton by 11 points, completely destroying my predictions straight away. So that was that. 85, 106 to Collinwood into Friday. Cats versus Lions at the GMHBA Stadium in Geelong. This one was the closest game of the weekend uh, and it was quite controversial as well. I think the Lions will feel a little bit disappointed by how it finished. Um, he was holding on to the ball. I, I believe he was holding on to the ball and they've um, uh, and he's also through it as well and the Cats have got the goal to seal the win and as I say Lions will be very disappointed but all that being said no matter how it finished I actually predicted a Lions win Cats came out victorious in this it possibly should have been a Lions win but it was 81-80 so all of that being said it was a very close game regardless of that but you never like to see decisions what what were your your views um, as supporters of the sport or if you like if you support either team let me know what your views were on that was he holding on the ball did he throw it etc should it have stood or should it have been a free I believe it should have been free but anyway let me know what you think um, that's what makes footy a great sport isn't it it's uh, these controversial decisions and, and it gets fans talking and everybody engaging and absolutely ribbing each other by the way after the game uh, of course because a loss is very hard to swallow particularly when it's something like this so anyway Cats 81, Lions 80 I haven't put any notes down really on that one um, but very closely fought game indeed. Um, on a Saturday, 27th of March, in Sydney, SCG, Suns hosted Crows. Very good game as well. Crows are actually scoring goals. They are scoring goals. Tex Walker stepped up and kicked six 
in this game. So they are creating chances and they are scoring. But Swans have been mighty in this last couple of weeks. Um, round one and two, hitting over a century twice. Um, very good uh, value for money watching them. And of course, Buddy is back. Buddy is back. I think he kicked a few goals as well. Um, Papley was good. I, did I write any more notes on this one? Let me see. Uh, I didn't really put too much uh, down on it, but the Swans are looking very, very good indeed. It was McDonald was the player I tried to mention. I said Logan, I think his first name, the other day. Um, and of course, the other player that I mentioned. I've actually got both of them in my... Um, it's Errol Golden and... McDonald are two players that I put in my super coach team and I'm actually quite happy with it because they're racking up the stats and Swans are playing lovely attacking footy so long may that continue as long as I've got players uh, I think I've got three or four possibly uh, Swans players in my team uh, which is quite surprising considering before the ball was bounced this year I actually had Swans as being a team that would be struggling but so far so good for the Swans there is of course an awful lot of footy to be played so anything can happen they could have just get up off to a flyer and then it could simmer out well you never know it really is uh, unpredictable to say the least anyway brilliant wins for the Swans I did predict the Swans win and I've got that one right thank God 121 80 brilliant result on to the Adelaide Oval then Port versus Essendon and Essendon the biggest losers of the weekend in terms of margin that they lost by and also um, players lost in this game through injury this is not looking good for Essendon not only are they not playing very well They've also been hit with major injuries as well in this one. Look, don't take anything away from Port. Port were magnificent again. Dixon's kicked four. Georgie is brilliant. He says Marshall. Marshall's, I'm really enjoying his stuff. He's took a bit of an injury and in comes Georgie Addis and he's just stepped up with four. So it's making competition for that position very, very tight indeed. Um... And you know what? It's a great position for Hinkley to be in with his forwards kicking goals for fun um, and battling for positions. Um, Butters was absolutely sensational on the day as well. Um, just let me see what I've wrote down there for that. Um, a leer, a leer, a leer is here. He was brilliant at the back as well. Butters was fantastic. Really enjoyed him. I called him, nicknamed him, Zach batters instead of butters because boy that man is not afraid to go into a challenge he loves big hits and he, his tackling is tremendous as well what a star i believe rosie's back for round three it's looking good for port they were victorious 119 to 65 absolutely incredible start to them they've just um started off where they left off last year um and they're looking like the team to beat i have been singing their praises for about six <laughs> not obviously the, the six month gap but for six months footy time I have been singing this team's praises and it looks like they are back off to a bang and round um, straight away in 2021 season so on to St Kilda versus Melbourne this game was great in terms of how competitively fought it was and I've got to say a big up St Kilda an awful lot this last little while um, and they were good. They were good. There was players that stepped up, played really, really well for them uh, at the weekend. But Melbourne were better. The Demons were better. Let me tell you, uh, I'm impressed with the way uh, they've started so far in 2021. Uh, <laughs> Jones has been good for them up top. Um, I, I love Fritch. I think Petraka's outstanding. But... The most enjoyable thing for me when it comes to Melbourne so far is watching the little magician pick it. Pick it. He's kicked a couple of goals there as well in this game. But it's the way in which he's went about them. I love the way the indigenous players can just turn it on, drop a shoulder, sell some candy here, sell some candy there. And a little fucking spin of the fucking body and they are away opened up a bit of space for them and created a goal out of what would look like a no goal scoring opportunity. It's just the flair, it's just pure unadulterated magic that these little indigenous guys can um, produce. 
just at the drop of a hat as well. He looks like he is going to be one of the game's most exciting players over the next few years to come. And I am looking forward to reviewing this player more. Brilliant. Pick it. My standout player just purely because of the magic of it. So well done to him. And of course Melbourne who I never predicted um, to get the win. I did predict Saints purely because of the way they've been playing. But there's two wins from two for Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne well done to them. Congratulations, 91-73 at the Marvel. Brilliant atmosphere as well. Suns then up against North. I predicted a Suns win. Not going to go into it too much, but Suns are looking pretty decent in this game. Of course, Raul was out. Isaac Rankins kicked a few. King's begging about. He's doing well. Quite a few players I enjoy actually watching at the Suns, but it's all going horribly wrong for North, who have lost two on the bounce now um, and it was 98-39 um, quite a big margin of a defeat in the end wasn't it um, but Suns victorious good luck to them uh, I think they'll struggle with consistency they will get wins they'll chip in with the odd win here and there but I think they will struggle with consistency I think North are going to be right down in and about the contention for the wooden spoon um, I'm sure they won't want to hear me say that but they have been poor and they look like they're going to be poor so uh, not a great time for North fans at all um, going into Sunday then Hawks versus Richmond and this one panned out exactly the way I thought it would I just want to say one thing Dustin Martin has been an absolute sensation um, in 2021 so far. Brilliant player. He's kicked one from 55. I think Jack Rewalt scored four, albeit Dusty probably could have took the fourth one himself, but he's just a lovely little handball uh, pass into the way of Rewalt, who was just like three, three metres from the goal line. Bang, there you go, kicking his fourth. So, great team play from... Uh, Dusty and Rio and that one uh, and Richmond are looking good. What can I say? Two wins. Would you have expected anything less? Probably not. Uh, but 78, 49 to Richmond. Not really too much needed to go into that one. I think Hawks are going to be um, win loss win loss that kind of team this year. Um, but they're actually playing a little bit better than I think they did at times last year so far. Uh, albeit they did lose this one, 78-49 in the end, well done Richmond, this one at the MCG of course. Bulldogs Eagles then, let me tell you, of course you all know I'm Bulldogs, you might have seen my review at the weekend, it wasn't much of a game review, it was more a celebration of this wonderful sport, wasn't it? This is what footy's all about, and let me tell you, this one might not have panned out this sort of way in terms of... Um, the cliffhanger finish if we had had the shorter periods. I don't know. It was a bit of a yo-yo game, back and forward, back and forward. But the fashion in which it finished was just breathtaking. Absolutely remarkable. I mean, I can't say this game won't be beaten for competitiveness for a while. It's been the most enjoyable game in probably over a year for me in terms of com competitiveness. Um, and pure quality on display. It, w it just had everything. Two very, very good, highly skilled teams, and they just giving it everything, throwing everything at the kin and the kitchen sink at this one, and it delivered on the the score sheet and in terms of just a visual viewing of it. A hundred to ninety three. Bont and Pelly kicking the last goal of the game. It went from coast to coast on this one um, for that goal. The Eagles were on the attack for this last goal of the game and uh, somehow Bruce has kept it in and he's just punted it forward. Bont and Pelly's picked it up, he's took a breather and he slotted it home. Lovely kick from the left hand out boundary. Um, but brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. This is why we love this sport. And I think the inclusion, as I say, of the back to the original 20 minute quarters um, has been absolutely sensational and, and it does it gives teams that are maybe be, look dead and buried that extra bit of time within quarters to fight their way back in it maybe a team started strongly for the first two thirds of the quarter but it gives a team that little bit of um, fighting space to, to get their way back in to the game within the quarters and not to mention within the full game itself but absolutely brilliant game if you haven't seen it watch the highlights of that one 
Best game I've seen in over a year, probably. Um, and I'm not going to say it won't be beaten, because it might be. Um, look, the attacking brand of footy that we're seeing in 2021 so far is looking fantastic. It's really difficult defensively um, to stop goals. And it makes for fantastic viewing. There's going to be players kicking possibly over 10 goals in a game. Individual players kicking over 10 goals in a game this year. Maybe on several occasions um, as well. It is that attacking. Um, look, Eagles were magnificent. But Bulldogs just slightly better in the end and getting the win. Um, flying Ryan. A little, bit, a little bit of magic from him as well. Selling candy for his goal. He's weaving in and out. He's weaving in and out. He's going, am I going this way? No, I'm not. Am I going this way? No, I'm not. Yes, I'm going this way. And he's just blitzed past. Can't remember who it was now in the Bulldogs defence. Left him for dead and just slotted at home very, very easily. But I think the talking point of the day will be the Bonton Pelly goal right at the end to finish it. He was magnificent. But one player I simply must mention is Footy's Mr. Consistent. Yes, I'm putting it all out there and saying this man is Mr. Consistent of the footy uh, world. It is Jack McRae. What a player. 41 disposals. How many times does this man rack up 30 plus disposals in a game? It's absolutely frightening. I think he's managed 41 on the, uh, on the game. Um, absolutely brilliant. One of the game's best players, but flies under the radar. That is why I'm making a point of pointing this man out. Obviously, there's so many players in the game that are going to catch headlines for doing moments of magic, like Pickett, like Flying Ryan there, like Dustin Martin, um, like Big Charlie Dixon probably is going to kick quite a lot of goals this year. So many players because of their, their magic and also their goal scoring ability or their the way they tackle. But make no mistake, what this man um, brings to the Bulldogs team is just nothing short of spectacular. So I am taking time to mention Jack McCrew's name. Absolutely is, in my opinion, Mr. Consistent of the AFL Congratulations to him on racking up these stats again. Last game of the weekend then. Not going to go into it too much because I've noticed this is quite a long video. But Frio's got other win that they needed in 2021. Um, and boom. And it's at the expense of the Giants who I think have been poor. Let me tell you. This one came at the Optus. I should stay in Western Australia there. Um, and Frio. Do you know what? They're, they're going to huff and puff this year, aren't they? They're going to be like Hawks, possibly. Get wins here and there. Um, it's going to probably be quite ugly at times. It's going to probably be quite inconsistent at times. But they're by no means going to be propping the bottom um, four or five teams up. I think they'll be above that. They'll be outside the ten, probably the top ten. But um, they're going to be in and about there, aren't they? Um they will put on games where you'll enjoy it, but the Giants, I think, could be this year's biggest droppers in terms of how they play. I've really not been impressed with them so far. Frio did run out 87, 56 winners, which left my predictions at 6 out of 9 um, over the weekend, which isn't great in a predictions perspective, but the view in this weekend of footy, round two, was nothing short of absolutely spectacular. Just running through the winners then. Collingwood, Cats, Swans, Port, Melbourne, Suns, Richmond, Bulldogs and Frio. Congratulations to all of them. Absolutely remarkable round of footy. What was your favourite uh, moment over the, the weekend? Obviously the questions I've asked, please get back to me on that in terms of um, the Lions-Cats game uh, and possibly the out-of-bounds Calton Gibbons goal. Uh, it was out-of-bounds, but I don't really give a damn about it, to be honest with you. It didn't really affect the result, did it? It wasn't one of those ones where it was out-of-bounds and Collingwood's lost because of an out-of-bounds goal. Uh, it's just a moment of pure brilliance. It shouldn't have counted, in my opinion. But let me know on the contentious things in the game, what the umps got wrong, what you think, and also what was your favourite moments over the weekend. But wow, my favourite moment has to be our moment. The whole game, Bulldogs versus Eagles. Oh my word, I'm still blown away by the level of footy that was being played and how competitive it was. And 
and the atmosphere inside that Marvel Stadium. When that roof shut, it's absolutely brilliant. It's a great place for footy to be played. I absolutely love it. But that's me with my round two review done. Thanks very much for watching if you've stuck with me throughout the whole video. I do tend to babble on a little, but I do try and digest nine games of footy into a short video. It's not easy. I could talk for a couple of hours on it, but trying to can, um, compress it into a small video is pretty difficult. Um, but here, there you go. That's it done. Don't forget to subscribe, everyone, and fire the bell on if you haven't so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Um, within the AFL video world, because of course I do other content as well, albeit not often anymore. But yes, do, do that please, and also check out all of our social media platforms in the description section below. That would be fantastic. Thanks very much everyone, and I'll see you all soon for my predictions video. And also, as I've said, I've got a uh, reaction video to do for uh, one of my patrons, Garrett from Western Australia there. Thanks very much, mate. Uh, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.